Hey there, everyone, and happy not quite Halloween anymore, because I was very busy in October, but the Halloween spirit continues, let's say. Either way, today I have something for you that's a little outside my usual wheelhouse, but nonetheless very close to my heart. Are You Afraid of the Dark is a Canadian-made, Nickelodeon-produced children's horror anthology show that ran for five seasons from 1992 to 1996. It came back for two additional seasons in 1999 and 2000, and most recently revived as a three-episode miniseries in 2019, with talks of more on the way. The original seven seasons and the 2019 revival span 94 episodes, most of which tell their own self-contained stories presented through a shared framing device, the Midnight Society a group of teens who meet up in the woods at night to tell scary and fantastical stories around a campfire. Each episode begins with some light antics between the members before one of them sits down at the storyteller's chair. They take out a pouch of mysterious flammable dust, in actuality non-dairy creamer, and throw it into the fire, accompanied by the name of their story. From there, the tale begins and we, the audience, then see it played out with all the best production values Canadian children's television in the 90s could offer. Oh yeah. I, of course, grew up watching Are You Afraid of the Dark, and... Um, damn if it didn't leave an impression! <laughs> this show had a real knack for finding all sorts of uniquely scary imagery and lodging it into kids' brains for decades afterwards. I would bet that not a lot of adults who grew up watching the show on YTV and Nickelodeon could tell you specific plot or character details nowadays, but ask them if they remember the show with the creepy clown getting revenge for his stolen nose, or the skeletal red pool ghost, or the evil jester who turns people into giggling zombies that drool blue slime. Chances are you'd get a lot more recognition, like Oh my god, that show! Yes, I totally remember that! I had nightmares for weeks as a kid! In recent years, I found out that every episode of the original seven seasons is available free and legally on YouTube. At least outside the US, anyway. I don't know what y'all's situation is copyright-wise for that. I had considered revisiting the series on and off for a while, and when quarantine hit earlier this year... Mm, Let's just say I've, I've found myself with a, a lot more uh, time on my hands to watch a, a long series, finally. Um, and uh, of course, what better way to comfort oneself in the face of a terrifying future than to go back to one's terrifying past where the scares seem a lot more quaint by comparison. Mm. That said, I honestly had a lot of fun revisiting Are You Afraid of the Dark? Apart from it being essentially a children's version of The Twilight Zone, which is already a great idea for a show, it's just a neat little piece of Canadian television history. There are a few famous faces here and there, such as Ryan Gosling, Jay Baruchel, Hayden Christensen, Nev Campbell, Gilbert Gottfried, and others. But I honestly had the most fun spotting smaller talent that I recognized from other random Canadian kids' productions I grew up watching. Like, Seriously, half the casts of the Magic School Bus and Arthur appear on this show at one point or another. So if you're a voice actor nerd, you will have tons of fun spotting them. There is also a lot of shared cast and crew between this series and fellow Canadian kids horror show Goosebumps. And there are also just a bunch of actors who appeared in different roles across Dark itself. So it became fun to just recognize those people and say like, Oh hey, I remember you from that episode. Welcome back. Not to mention, the show is pretty interesting from a production standpoint. It's fun seeing what the creators could and couldn't get away with showing to kids back then. And you would be surprised at just how far they were able to go in some places. Just some really standout uses of makeup and creature design, considering the budget and scale of the production, it's just loads of cool stuff. Most pleasantly surprising was that the show was a lot more diverse than I remembered it being too, and that wasn't just by accident either. The showrunners have said in interviews that they went out of their way to cast actors from as many different racial backgrounds as they could. No role was off limits based on race unless it was a biological relative of an already established character. There are several episodes that have majority non-white main casts, 
and there are multiple interracial couples throughout the series, including at least one or two where neither character involved is white. The show was eventually recognized for its efforts, with a nomination for an NAACP Image Award in 1996. It's really encouraging to see so many talented young Black, Asian, Latinx, and other actors of color getting the spotlight in an industry that, to this day, often undervalues them. Gender-wise, there's also about an even split between male and female protagonists, which is welcome to see, especially in the horror genre. Not all of the show's representation is great. For a Canadian-made show, there really could have stood to be more Indigenous actors and characters, especially ones who weren't made to play out tired old Indigenous stereotypes. Fat people really can't catch a break either. It's rare for this show to bring in an overweight character and not either make jokes about them or just make them a generally distasteful person. Some of the Midnight Society bits also lean into mildly uncomfortable territory as well when it comes to male characters hitting on female characters and not taking no for an answer, but again, it's fairly mild on that front at least, and thankfully, the show's few missteps aside, it tends to get a lot more right than it does wrong. In any case, now that I have watched all 94 episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark, I suppose you're curious, since you clicked on this video that has ranking every Are You Afraid of the Dark episode in the title, what were my favorites? What were my least favorites? Which episodes have stood the test of time? While far from every episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark is a winner, I feel like there's at least something to be said about all of them, good or bad. Plus, <laughs> I watched every episode. I, I think it's only fair that I get to share those efforts with the world, don't you? I, I spent two months watching this show with just about everyone I know giving me strange looks every time I brought it up. I, I get to make that worthwhile somehow. I get to make a video about it! So I'm gonna give mini reviews of every episode and rank them from worst to best. To keep this moving at a faster pace, each review will be 25 words or less, except for the top 10, which will still be short-ish but won't have a word limit. Multi-part episodes, including all three episodes of the 2019 reboot, will be counted together as one episode slash story each. So that works out to 89 total stories in the ranking. Standard disclaimer for opinions on the internet, these are just my subjective rankings, and they're not super precise either. The rankings changed constantly as I wrote this and reconsidered my feelings on various episodes. So if I ranked an episode you like really low or an episode you hate really high, that's fine. Everyone is entitled to their opinions. Mine are not the be all and all. I'm a lot more forgiving of certain qualities of the show than others are, and vice versa, there are some qualities that bug me about it than uh, bug others, so every, everyone's different. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Also, I should say, even most of the lower ranked episodes, I actually like a decent amount. Only like the bottom 10 are ones that I didn't really like, and of those, only like the bottom 3 are ones that I actively dislike. What can I say? Are You Afraid of the Dark is quality children's programming. It's a good show. That's why I watched all of it. It's, I like it. So, with that out of the way, let the ranking begin. Starting with my personal least favorite episode, The Tale of the Virtual Pets. This show rarely did thing young people like bad stories, but they did do this one, and it was not great. Feed me. Say what? The Tale of the Dark Dragon. Could have been a cool story about learning not to hate yourself, but everyone here is just such an asshole. Even Sardo can't save this one. The Tale of the Lunar Locusts. This episode is a mess. Acting, pacing, concept, production, it's all kind of garbage. Points for one of the rare unhappy endings, though. The Tale of the Room for Rent. There's an ambitious love triangle across time and death story happening here. Shame it's ruined by some truly wretched acting and pacing. Well, at least he'll be safe there. We gotta get help. The Tale of the Manaha. A bland kid's summer camp story brought down by a bunch of bad indigenous stereotypes. At least it's got Michael Gray eyes in it. The Tale of the Hungry Hounds. Some standout imagery in parts, mainly Mia Kirshner walking through a foggy cemetery at night. Still, mostly just kind of confused and dull.
the tale of the carved stone. Lots of good elements at play, especially Frank Gorshin's character, but none of them get enough attention. It ends up feeling kind of pointless. The Tale of the Guardian's Curse. Like Carved Stone, this one feels pointless despite a lot of interesting elements at play. Why are mummy stories so hard to get right? The Tale of the Stone Maiden. Again, promising in theory, but boring in practice. A common problem in the bottom 10. This one has some fun supporting characters, at least. The Tale of the Twisted Claw. This pilot shows some major growing pains, bad acting, dull plot, but also some promise of what would come in the future. The Tale of Locker 22. Going back in time to investigate a ghost's death is cool. The 1960s stuff is super goofy though, and not in a good way. You dig? Be cool, be cool. The Tale of the Water Demons. Lots of people like this episode, but it didn't do much for me. It's fine. I'm just not a fan of soggy zombies, I guess. The Tale of C7. A sweet story, but there are better sweet stories in the series. Highlight of this one is the dynamic between the kids and their mom. The Tale of the Nightly Neighbors. A perfectly competent My Neighbors Are Vampires story. Main issue is there's not much to it beyond that. Decent ending, though. The Tale of the Hunted. Some ambitious stuff with perspective shots and limited dialogue. Otherwise, kind of dry, and a hunting episode that can't show guns is kind of weird. The Tale of the Long Ago Locket. Another one that's just kind of boring, but Wilfredell is fun, at least. I like the dynamic between him and Lieutenant William. The Tale of the Phone Police takes a silly premise and runs with it, and honestly, I can respect that. <laughs> Acting is pretty bad, though, even by this show's standards. The Tale of the Laser Maze! Slightly better example of taking a silly premise and running with it. Matt Holland's scenery-chewing villain is the highlight here. Then let the games begin! The Tale of the Phantom Cab. A genuine, so bad it's good episode. The child actors are amazingly awful, and both adult characters, including Dr. Vink, are delightfully hammy. You might say, I sort of died! <laughs> the Tale of a Door Unlocked. Another meh episode, but the idea of a little door that tells the future stuck with me for years, so points for that. The Tale of the Frozen Ghost. Again, this one's doofy. The good kind of doofy, but still. Has some well done ghost effects though. And hey, Melissa Joan Hart! Ghosts? The Tale of the Unexpected Visitor. Mostly unremarkable, but I like the use of music tones. The alien door in the woods is cool, and Perch is great. Whoa, eclectic riff! The Tale of Cutter's Treasure, parts one and two. Arr. Really doesn't benefit from the extra episode. Again, the adult characters are a highlight, though, especially Charles S. Dutton as Cutter. The Tale of Prisoner's Past. An okay sibling bonding story with a sweet ending. The ghost effects are simple but effective. Plus, an abandoned prison is a great horror setting. The Tale of Bigfoot Ridge. No Bigfoot, misleading title, 0 out of 10. <laughs> nah, this one's okay, if a bit convoluted. Cool to see a bit of snowbound horror. The Tale of the Walking Shadow. Frustrating plot progression, and the ending falls a bit flat. Still, the characters are enjoyable, and I do like me a good Shakespeare riff. Macbeth. Ah! The Tale of the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Two-thirds a dull episode, and one-third pure joy. <laughs> Has one of those one-dimensional villains you just gotta love. Goth for Prime Minister 2020. The Tale of the Last Dance. It's cool that they attempted to modernize Phantom of the Opera, and it mostly works aside from a few baffling creative choices. The Tale of Jake the Snake. Once you get past the silly hockey stuff and weird digital creature mask, this is a cool little body horror story. Also, Snake Pit! The Tale of the Midnight Ride. Some great production design here with costumes, makeup, and effects that give it that quintessential Halloween vibe. The protagonist is very m'lady, though. Super off-putting. 
the tale of the gruesome gourmets. AKA, fat people are weird, am I right? Ugh. Still, despite the uncomfortable fat shaming, the campy tone and art direction are really hard not to love. We relish discovering new places on our own. Yes, we just gobble it up. <laughs> Adieu. The Tale of the Vacant Lot does what Dark Dragon wanted to do, but with better writing and acting. Some impressively gross makeup work going on here, too. The Tale of the Silver Sight, parts one to three. Ambitious project with an interesting structure, but feels all over the place. Not a fan of supernatural stuff with the Midnight Society, either. Feels wrong. The Tale of the Silent Servant. Story is okay, but creature design is key here. This is one of the creepiest scarecrows I've ever seen, and it's put to great use. The Tale of Oblivion. Overall, a fun, creative episode, but feels like it could have gone even further with the concept. Still, works decently within the format's limitations. The Tale of the Mystical Mirror. Not too special, but I really like the villain, and the wild concept of a witch staying young by turning girls into dogs. The Tale of the Zombie Dice. A distinctive villain kidnaps kids in some disturbing supernatural way? Classic Are You Afraid of the Dark. Now with Dice ASMR. And Jay Baruchel. The Tale of the Curious Camera. Who doesn't love a good haunted camera story? Highlights are the photographer, played by Richard McMillan, RIP, and the banana pants final scene. The Tale of the Magician's Assistant. Another one held up by an entertaining adult character, James Bradford as Shandu the Magician, and that also has a banana pants final act. Shandu? Can do! The Tale of the Misfortune Cookie. Essentially, it's a wonderful life in a Chinatown setting. Great to see a nearly all Asian cast. Some iffy stereotypes, but still a sweet story. The Tale of Vampire Town. Feels like it's missing something. I also have mixed feelings about the ending. Aside from that, very entertaining and has a fun lead character. The Tale of the Fire Ghost. Some notable WTF moments, but otherwise a solid story about a kid processing his parents' divorce. Also some cool pyrotechnics and other special effects. The Tale of the Forever Game. I'm a sucker for stories about magical games. This one is simple and suspiciously similar to Jumanji, but I still enjoyed it. Crackerjack little story. The Tale of Train Magic. A cool haunted train story with great production design, held back by a weak child actor. Just stiff as a board, this one. The Tale of Badge. Another one that's notable mainly for creature design and makeup, but this one also has a cool Irish granny and a clever plot reveal. Set her wind. The Tale of the Reanimator. The fact that they did Reanimator but for kids is wild and I love it. The end result is clunky, but still, A for effort. The Tale of the Captured Souls. Peter is a creepy, memorable villain, and Danny is a likable protagonist. Rest of the episode is meh, but these two performances elevate it. The Tale of Highway 13. Refreshing to see an episode about characters old enough to drive, and it means we get to see how this show handles a car chase. The Tale of the Closet Keepers. Very messy, but also very creative. One of the few deaf protagonists I've ever seen. Shame they didn't hire a deaf actress, but still. The Tale of the Full Moon. What gruesome gourmets could have been without the fat shaming. Not great, but has a fun what if John Waters made a kids movie vibe. I gotta go back in that house. Aw, oh, Jet, I'm taking a bath. Towel off. The Tale of the Chameleons. Cool to see Tia and Tamara Maori chewing some scenery. Some obvious flaws, those are iguanas, but a solid effort with a killer ending. The Tale of the Dangerous Soup. This episode is weird and should not work, but better than average performances, Vink being Vink, 
and a wild final battle make for an entertaining concoction. Ooh. The Tale of the Pinball Wizard. Another goofy one that's still a fun watch, until the ending, that is. Man, still as impactful as it ever was. The Tale of Laughing in the Dark. Weaker acting holds this back from being as strong as I remembered, but it's still an iconic episode and Zebo is still an iconic villain. It's the most fun in the park when you're laughing in the dark. <laughs> the Tale of the Lonely Ghost. Like Laughing in the Dark, this has strong, scary, and nostalgic elements, but it's unfortunately held back by weaker acting and pacing. Don't touch my stuff. The Tale of the Quiet Librarian. Some top-tier creepy scenes, and the librarian herself is a top-tier villain. The rest of the episode's a bit of a drag, though. The Tale of the Time Trap. This one is super goofy, but super fun. The major characters are a delight, especially this wacky genie girl played by Eleanor Noble. The Tale of the Dream Machine. Great cast, great premise, scary set pieces, especially the cemetery stuff. Horrible fat shaming and iffy consent implications are the only things keeping this down. The Tale of the Renegade Virus. I love goofy hackers shit. This episode is silly, but goes for some creative, surreal visuals and decently gross cyber body horror. Tale of Old Man Corcoran. A simple, low-key ghost story with a twist you may see coming, but still effective nonetheless. Sometimes less is more. The Tale of the Hatching. And sometimes more is more! Creepy cult school, lizard people, weird synth music, Dutch angles, a big dragon puppet. <laughs> what more could you want? The Tale of the Night Nurse a much more effective version of Locker 22. Cinematography really highlights the nurse's creepy performance, and the mystery comes together in a mostly satisfying way. The Tale of Jake and the Leprechaun. David Steinberg oozes charm despite all the Irish stereotypes he has to work with. Also some fantastic makeup and atmosphere for the villain. I wouldn't miss it for all the suds in Dublin. The Tale of the Final Wish. The ending blows, but otherwise a fun story about teenage growing pains. Some standout set design, and A-plus use of Bobcat Goldthwaite. If you think that you're gonna scare me again... Hi there! <laughs> the Tale of the Photo Finish. An honest-to-god episode about classism. Impressive stuff with loads of fun hijinks and stylish, memorable set pieces. A few weird plot beats, but whatever. The Tale of the Quicksilver. Plot feels overstuffed, but the scares are still effective. Also one of several good episodes that address death in a serious way. The Tale of Many Faces. Again, story could have used room to breathe, but otherwise supremely scary and well-written. Madame Visage is the best villain of the revival seasons. The Tale of the Jagged Sign. Oh, shut up, I like sweet old people stories takes the effects from Frozen Ghost and applies them to a much better, unfinished business episode. The Are You Afraid of the Dark 2019 miniseries. Great production values, likable cast, outstanding villain, and strong aesthetics all make this a worthy successor series. Just mm, supernatural stuff with the Midnight Society, though. Mm. It's all The Tale of the Thirteenth Floor. Cheap production design brings this down a bit, but the alien characters are great, and the ending is one of the show's most iconic. The Tale of the Crimson Clown. Hot take, this is the show's best creepy clown episode. Perfect balance of cartoony and menacing. A satisfying, bratty kid gets his comeuppance story. Nobody will help you, Sam. Nobody wants to. <laughs> the Tale of the Wisdom Glass. Big time prisoner vibes here. 
goes hard on creating an absurd, garish nightmare world, and I love it. The implied ending is super dark, too. The tale of the unfinished painting has a sense of eerie dreaminess about it. Add in Jewel State's acting and a fiery, dramatic climax, and you have a solid episode. The Tale of the Whispering Walls. Speaking of dreaminess, this episode has an uncanny waking nightmare quality no others do. Bit messy otherwise, but I have to give it that credit. This is for you! <laughs> the Tale of the Ghastly Grinner. Not in my top 10, but still an iconic and nostalgic episode. Mixes camp and scares with a fantastic villain, and also Hooper Picolero. What's the matter, kid? You don't like to laugh? Sorry, I don't have much of a sense of humor. The Tale of the Dollmaker. This one stuck with kids for a reason. Combines slow burn suspense, atmosphere, and horrifying supernatural imagery. Shaky acting, but well made otherwise. The Tale of the Night Shift. One of the show's most thrilling, technically impressive episodes. One major character I dislike, but otherwise a fantastic final story for the original series. The Tale of the Dead Man's Float. Unquestionably the best creature work the series ever did. I mean, look at it! Story isn't quite top 10 level for me, but still solid. The Tale of the Prom Queen. The formula is simple. Take a classic tale, bring in a likable cast, and give it a new twist. Sometimes, that's all you need. Hey, we're just having a goof. And now what you've all been waiting for, my top 10 favorite episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Starting with... The Tale of Station 109.1. This one has all kinds of memorable imagery that came rushing back to me when I watched it again. The Beetlejuice waiting room, the hearse, the slap bracelets, these grim reaper looking creeps, the doorway to literal hell, Gilbert Gottfried's everything. Do not knock on the window! What's the matter with you? You can't breathe? Here, knock window. Do not on the... Let's try it together, shall we? Do not knock on the window! People always bring this one up because baby Ryan Gosling is in it, but honestly, he's the least interesting part of it. This episode is weird and dark and funny and intense and honestly sweet by the end, and I love it. The Tale of the Dark Music. I'm pretty sure I never saw this as a kid, because if I had, I know I would have had all of the nightmares. Hi, Andy. Won't you come play with me? We can have lots of fun. Just come with me. Each form of the demon in the cellar is scary in its own unique way, and the ending is one of the creepiest and most brutal of the show's entire run. Even watching it for the first time as an adult, this one left a strong impression. The Tale of Apartment 214. What did I say about sweet old people's stories? This episode blends several different threads together. Moving to a new place, friendship across generations, the importance of keeping promises, and also- Holy crap, this old lady is super scary, what the fuck? Why did you break your promises? These threads are all surprisingly well balanced, too. At least as much as they can be in a 25 minute episode. Yeah. Yeah, this one definitely holds up. The Tale of the Secret Admirer. Far and away my favorite episode of the revival seasons. One of the few episodes to feature something that's still scary in adulthood, stalker shit. Make the stalker a menacing, charred up ghost with some great makeup, go all out on the spooky cinematography, top it off with a likable cast, and boom, awesome episode. I need to know. Do you feel the same way about me as I feel about you? The Tale of the Bookish Babysitter. This is one of the more nostalgia-driven picks in the top 10 for me. What is it about this one that sticks with me? 
the focus on books, which I loved growing up? Is it the eerie, distorted shadow ghost in the hall? The gross, over-the-top witch? It's all of that. But let's be real, mostly it's Belinda. Pretty sure I had a baby bisexual crush on her and just never realized it at the time. Get you a goth GF who's good with kids and likes to read, y'all. This is getting fun. Now what happens? The Tale of the Shiny Red Bicycle. And here's a pick that's not nostalgia-driven at all. I never saw this as a kid, but the story is undeniably one of the strongest in the series. This is the most sincerely the show ever dealt not just with death, but with grief and trauma, and how much worse those things are to deal with when the people around you are pressuring you to just get over it already. Really highlights how dismissive society is of mental health and emotional issues, and has a satisfying arc with the main character getting closure on the death of a friend. The Tale of the Midnight Madness. As a film studies major, I'm admittedly biased when it comes to a story about old silent movies and saving an independent theater. But this episode is also consistently in other fans' top 10 lists, so I'm pretty sure it's not just me. It's no mystery why. You've got a super likable lead character, good supporting cast, tight pacing, by far the best incarnation of Dr. Vink, a cool homage to Nosferatu, some simple but very well executed effects, a fun twist at the end. It's all marvelous stuff. Just pure joy. Good show, lad. I couldn't have written it better myself. <laughs> the Tale of the Dream Girl. Did you know there's an episode of this children's horror show so good that it made me, a 30-something-year-old woman, actually cry? And like Shiny Red Bicycle, I had never seen this one before, so it's not the nostalgia talking either. This is almost flawlessly constructed to create a tale that's equal parts eerie and sentimental. Another one that sincerely tackles death as well. There's a movie this episode is often compared to, and I won't bring it up for spoiler reasons, but it's not hard to see why people claim this episode was the inspiration for said movie. And for the record, it's not true. The director has said in interviews he had never seen the show before making it. Regardless, it's interesting to see this concept executed so well, and years before the most well-known example of a similar story was made. If there's one episode I would recommend even to non-fans of Are You Afraid of the Dark, it would be Dream Girl. The Tale of Watcher's Woods. There may be episodes that are higher quality in some respects, but for my money, Watcher's Woods may be the best mix of everything Are You Afraid of the Dark has to offer. It's a wonderful blend of scares, camp, and sentimentality all in one. The set and costume work for the villain's campsite especially goes all out on spookiness and grossness, and the levels of child endangerment have rarely been higher than they are here. This episode has a skinless horse head in it, for goodness sake. And a guillotine! How did this show get away with multiple episodes threatening children with guillotines? I liked this episode as a kid and remembered it fondly enough, but coming back to it as an adult, it exceeded all my expectations on just about every front. Definitely check this one out if you're going to watch this show in any capacity. So, shall we start on our cooking medals or on our pet keeping medals? Why not cook half of her and <laughs> teach the other half to do tricks? <laughs> oh, wow, with that much praise, what could possibly take the number one spot, you ask? Well, I'll tell you, because my personal favorite episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark is The Tale of the Super Specs. Okay, yep, I know it's cheap, but I have to give my top spot to the episode that has the biggest place in my heart from childhood. I was originally going to list Watcher's Woods as my number one, because after reevaluating all 94 episodes, I truly thought it encapsulated all the series' best qualities. So, for what it's worth, you can think of Watcher's Woods as my number one if we're just talking episode quality. But deep in my heart, I knew that Super Specs was still my favorite. This episode had a huge impact on me as a kid. It's partially responsible for getting me into horror in the first place. Its imagery and music have stuck with me for decades. It may look cheap with adult eyes, but honestly, if you put people in black morph suits and then tell a child that their evil shadows lurking just out of sight at all times 
just waiting for the chance to drag you into a hell dimension forever? That is just one of the most frightening things you can imagine at that age, as it turns out. When I first started watching Are You Afraid of the Dark as a kid, I thought horror wasn't for me, specifically because episodes like this gave me very strong, vivid nightmares. But I had a friend at that age who loved this show and other media like it, and I looked up to her a lot. So I tried to be brave for her, and I kept watching shows like Are You Afraid of the Dark, Goosebumps, Tales from the Crypt Keeper, Freaky Stories. Who remembers Freaky Stories? I remember Freaky Stories. Gradually, I started to realize I wasn't doing it for her anymore. I genuinely liked the thrill and creativity of this kind of entertainment. And Super Specs feels very representative of that transition for me because it is present in nearly all of my memories of that time as this big scary thing that I felt like I'd overcome and grown to appreciate. As for the episode as I see it now, like I said, some of it looks a bit silly now through grown-up eyes, but at its core I do think it still holds up. There are goofier aspects I didn't remember, like the fact that one of the main characters is named Weeds, or the fact that he uses literal monkey bone dust to curse a classmate into having a helium voice. <laughs> my voice! What's wrong with my voice? I sound like a chipmunk! But the gradual realization by our other main character, Mary Beth, about the horror that's closing in around them is still pretty effectively built up. The episode's synthesizer score by Jeff Fisher is also effectively weird and otherworldly. And heck, I'll say it. People in black morph suits still look pretty creepy, even if you know that's what they are. It's what helps this episode's dark, iconic ending play out as effectively as it does. Lastly, this is also hands down the episode I think of most when I think of Sardo. They call me Sardo. No, mister. Accent on the dough. Vink, I love ya, but Sardo was always my favorite recurring character in the show. Richard Dumont's performance in this role was always a sublime mix of incompetent con artist, coded gay man, and reluctant but endearing ally, and that persona was set pitch perfect by this episode. So yeah, the tale of the super specs. It's the episode I think of whenever someone mentions Are You Afraid of the Dark? It helped me discover my love of horror, and it's just a damn fine episode, some flaws aside. It may be a nostalgia pick, but it's still more than worthy of a watch today by any fan of the series. And that's it! What did you think of my rankings? What are your favorite episodes of the show? Were there any that impacted you strongly as a kid? Are there any that you haven't seen before but you're curious to check out now? Let me know in the comments below! And if you want any clarifications or extended thoughts about specific episodes, feel free to ask. And of course... I declare this meeting of the Midnight Society closed. Thanks for letting me borrow. That was awesome. <laughs> you did my work. Yeah. 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 Yeah.